house to everyone. Welcome to Chaitanya Academy uh, live stream. And we're continuing with our series of lectures on Bhagavad Gita chapter 10. And especially now we've come to uh, the third verse of a chapter sloki. Rupam <laughs> Oh, Radhika, what was some? Rapto, yes, sir. But it a creeper, Sri Guru, Tam Natosmi, Gurave, Gaura Chandra, Radhika, Itadale, Krishna, ya, Krishna, Bhaktaya, Tad Bhaktaya, Namo, Nama. Ananda Lila Maya Vikrahaya He Mabadibets Javi Sundra Tasma Mahaprimara Saprada Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Sham Sundar Shikandashika Smahas Murali Manoira Radikaras Kamama Kripana De Supriachana King Karim Kuru Tavasmi Tavasmi Najivani Chana Chayabina Iti Vikaya Devi Tam Namam Charam Tikam First of all, I offer my Sastang Khandivat Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadeya Paramarajatam Guru Padma, Nitilila Paravishta Om Vishnu Par, Ashto Tarastasi Rupanuga Chaivarya, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my uh, pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev, to Sula Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Panchakalpa Turubhasya, Kripa Sindhu Vyavitsa, Putitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Nama. So, by the causeless mercy of Sri Guran Goranga, last week we discussed uh, Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 10, verses uh, 8 and 9, uh, the first two verses of Chatur Sloki Bhagavad Gita. And today we want to discuss verses 10 and 11. So, here, the very heart of Bhagavad Gita, the whole essence of Bhagavad Gita given in four verses, in the very middle of the hmm, Bhagavad Gita. There, Sri Krishna is saying, Teisham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam Dadhami Bhutti Yogantam Yena Mamupayantiyate. To those who are continuously engaged in serving me and they are serving me, pretty Purvakam, with deep affection. Tadami Buddhi Yogantam. I give unto them Buddhi Yoga, the mm, consciousness, the awareness, the understanding by which they come to me. Tesham Evanu Kampanam. Ahamaja Agyana Jam Tamaha Nasha Amyatma Bhavasto 
Gana di Pena Bashvata. Sri Krishna said, to show Teisham Evanukam Partam, in order to show special favor to them, Ahama Gana Jamta Maha, I destroy the darkness uh, of ignorance. How? Nasha Metna Bhavasto, because I am situated in their heart and I destroy all ignorance. Gana di Pena Bashvata, by the illumination of the lamp of spiritual knowledge. So, these are the, uh, this is the second half or the last two verses of Chatsu Sloki Bhagavad Gita. Now let's go into the inner mood, what Sri Krishna is expressing in each word, uh, according to the revelation of our previous Acharyas. So first of all, Teisham Satato Yuktanam. See, Krishna is speaking about unto those who are always engaged in my service. So here, see, Krishna is speaking about those devotees he has previously described in the previous verse. Mats chitta madgata prana vodayanta parasparam katyantastamam nityam tushyanticha ramanticha. Those devotees, they are matita, they have given their heart fully to me. That means uh, they meditate on, on me continuously. Madgata prana, they have given their prana to me, their senses. That means outwardly, in their sadhak form, they are engaged in hearing, chanting and remembering. Or it can mean just as a person cannot live without his prana or without his chitta. So, these devotees cannot live without me even for one second. So unto them, Teisham Satata Yuktanam Bajatam Priti Puravakam, they're serving me with Priti. I give them the intelligence, the realization, the consciousness, the identity. The awareness, yena mam upayantiate, by which they come to me. That means by which they attain my direct association. So, a person may raise the question, the jiva is very tiny and very insignificant. So, how is it possible to realize you, Krishna? Because you are infinite and your qualities are infinite. Your powers are infinite. How is it possible for someone to, to realize you even through the teachings of Guru, the spiritual master? So in order to answer that, Sri Krishna is saying, yes, it's possible because I have the power to do the impossible, to make the impossible possible. So I myself personally reveal uh, myself to them and I mm, inspire them in such a way that they know how to come to me. How does that happen? In the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma prays to Sri Krishna. And in this verse, this is three, third canto, chapter nine, verse five. In this verse, Lord Brahma reveals how it is that by listening to Harikata from the lips of the spiritual master and from the lips of pure devotees, one can realize Sri Krishna. As Sri Krishna said in the previous verse, Bodhayanta Parasparam Katiyantascha. The devotees are enlightening each other. The devotees uh, are uh, speaking Harikata. So by speaking Harikata, this enlightenment comes about. So that is expressed here by Lord Brahma in 395. He's saying, Ye tu tvadiya charnam buja kosha ganda jigranti karna vivarai suti vata nitam bhaktya grihita charna parya chatisham na paisinata ridayam buru hat swapumsam. The meaning is that. Jigranti Karna Bivarai Suti Vartanita. Oh my Lord, 
you devotees, swa punsam, means those persons who are swa, your own. They belong to you, they have given yourself, and you have accepted them as your nearest and dearest ones. So those devotees, jigranti karna bevarai, they can smell they can smell the fragrance of your lotus feet. How do the devotees smell the fragrance of your lotus feet? Not with their nose. Jigranti kana vivare, through the holes of their ears. Now one may say, ears can hear and noses can take fragrance. How is it possible that the devotees can smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet through the ear? So Lord Brahma is saying, Jigranti Kana Vivarai Sutivata Nitam. That fragrance is carried on the air of the statements of the Vedas. In other words, the description of Sri Krishna's name, form, qualities, associates, and pastimes. When it is uh, articulated, when it, it, is, it is spoken by pure devotees, then this sound is not the Shabda Samanya, ordinary sound. It is Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound. And when that transcendental sound goes into the ear of the disciple who is very humble and very submissive and surrendered and affectionate to his guru, then when that sound goes in the ear, then, tasman mukam twadiya. The pastimes of Sri Krishna, they become transformed from sound into back into their original form. So, the. Pastimes of Krishna are in the heart of the devotee. They transform into sound when they come from his lips. And when that sound goes in the ear, it transforms back into what the pure devotee was hearing, what the pure devotee was seeing, experiencing in his heart when he was speaking. So, Tasmin Mukam Mukaritam Madhu Bich Charitra. The Mukarita Madhu Bich Charitra means that the pastimes of Krishna, Madhusudan and Krishna, they're Mukarita. They are transferred into sound vibration, and when the sound vibration goes in the ear, then they it is again experienced as Sri Krishna's pastimes directly. So here, Jigranti Kana Bivarai, the pure devotees smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet through the ear in the form of the sound of the pastimes of Krishna described in Vedic literature. So, though it is said they can smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet through the ear. By Lakshana Vritti, by association, it's understood that through the ear, they also see the beauty of his form. Uh, they can experience the uh, sweetness of his touch and the sweetness of his associates and all things. So here, fragrance uh, indicates all of the other realizations as well. They unfold gradually. So, Bhakta grihita charna parayata tesha. Who can experience this mm. fragrance of Sikrasha through the hearing process? Only those devotees who have bhaktiya grihita charna paraya, they have accepted the lotus feet of Krishna, the service that is the service of Krishna as their greatest treasure. Mm. And here, bhaktiya grihita charna paraya means that this bhakti is para. Parabhakti, that is Raganuga Bhakti. How do we know that this verse is referring to Raganuga Bhakti? That is a spontaneous devotional service. The devotional service which is Iste Swarasiki Raga, it is following in the wake of the eternal associates whose senses and mind, all of them, without any calculation, are spontaneously attracted to Krishna. They experience a Premamoyi Trishna. A, uh, a thirst which is uh, composed of uh, pure love. How do we know? Because here it is said that Tadiya Charnambuja Kosha Gandam, the 
feet of Krishna are like uh, uh, lotus flower. So the implication, as Sri Rupa Goswami has said, Krishna Deva Bhavantam Vande Manamana Samarukara Arpaya Nijapada Pankajama Karande. May my mind become like a bumblebee who is uh, eager to taste the nectar of the lotus, of Krishna's lotus feet. So a bumblebee has no calculation. He does not uh, think, oh, do I like honey? Do I like nectar or not? Spontaneously, when the bumblebee smells the fragrance of a lotus flower, then he becomes completely ecstatic and blinded by everything else and at once rushes there and become, becomes absorbed in tasting that nectar. So uh, this example has been given that Krishna's feet, they are like a lotus because it indicates that the devotion to see Krishna uh, of the devotee in the Raga mark, in the path of Raganuga Bhakti is completely spontaneous. It is not dependent on the statements of the scripture or on the, state, or on the power of his reasoning and logic, etc. So in the last line of this verse, Lord Brahma is saying, Na paisi na tiridayamburat sopungsan. And when the devotee relishes the uh, nectar of service to the lotus feet of Krishna, then see Krishna never gives up the lotus of the heart of that devotee. In other words, see Krishna comes and he lives in the heart of the devotee and he never gives up that devotee. Now, here in the same verse, the um, analogy of the lotus has been given twice. Once for the lotus feet of Krishna, and now that was in the first line. And then in the second line, the analogy of the heart of the devotee also being like a lotus. So it indicates, as Sri Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, prapadyante I reciprocate with the devotees. So the implication is that when the devotee is saturated in love for Krishna and he has a spontaneous devotion to see Krishna's lotus feet, like a bumblebee is attracted to a lotus flower. So then see Krishna seeing the devotee and see Krishna, bhajatam priti puravakam, as it is said in this verse of Bhagavad Gita. When the devotee has a pure love, serving, absorbing love, then Krishna, he gives them the intelligence, buddhi yoga, by which they can come to him. That means that see Krishna himself is so pleased by the loving service of his devotee, Krishna himself also becomes like a bee. And Krishna becomes spontaneously attracted and intoxicated to that devotee. And he comes and lives in that devotee's heart. And he can never leave him. So this is a very beautiful analogy. On the one hand, the devotee is like a bee, maddened and intoxicated, attracted to the lotus feet of Krishna. And Krishna, because he always reciprocates, is like a bumblebee. He's maddened uh, by the praying in the heart of the devotee. And he comes there and he enlightens them. That's why it will be said, Krishna says in the next verse that, Nasham Yatma Bhava Stok, situated in his heart, I destroy all of his. Uh, ignorance. So Atma Bhava Sto, situated in the heart, means that Krishna, becoming like a bumblebee, attracted to the heart of the devotee, he goes there, and because Krishna is mm, so Ujjwala, he is Ujjwala Nilamani, like a blazing, shining sapphire of romantic love. So that beautiful appearance of the former Krishna in the heart dispels all ignorance. Now, someone may say, the devotee has been in this material world for countless lifetimes, anadi, kal, since time with no beginning. So he's in such a darkness for such a long time. How is it possible, Krishna, that you can illuminate his heart? So in reply, see, Krishna is speaking this verse. Teisham evanukam partam 
out of mercy, showing mercy to them. Why? Because the devotee is serving with so much the attachment, so much tender loving feelings. So Krishna, out of mercy, he comes into their heart just like a bumblebee. And my form and qualities, they are so dazzling. They are so um, radiant, so lustrous that I destroy all darkness. Now, what is that darkness? That darkness is the samsaric asakti, attachment for all other things, all worldly things, attachment for anything except for my service. Mm -hmm. What is that darkness? That is the mm, last remnant of the reactions of the anadi karma, the karmas which have been performed for time anadi without any beginning. All those impressions which were there in the subconscious, they are completely destroyed. Now one may say, only a person who is very intelligent and has studied and learned all different types of subjects, such as grammar and Jyotish astrology and uh, all the Vedic rituals, only they can uh, become free from all ignorance. So see, Krishna is saying, no, my devotees fully depend upon me. As in the previous chapter, See, Krishna had said, Ananyas chintayantamam ye jana paryupasate tesham nityabhyuktanam yogatsema vamyaham. For those who always think of me with one pointed attention, then whatever they have, I preserve it, and whatever they're lacking, I bring that. So, in the same way, the pure devotee is not lacking in anything at all. Whatever knowledge, whatever is required for him, Krishna himself. He supplies that to his devotee. Now, the Dhami Buddha Yogantam, Krishna said, I give them the consciousness by which they come to me. I destroy all their ignorance. I give them all transcendental uh, knowledge. So, how is that so? Because this is the nature of bhakti. In Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, uh, chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, Sila Rupa Goswami has very beautifully described the nature of bhakti. He said, Avirbhuya mano brto prajanti tat sarupatam swayam prakasha rupa api bhashamana prakashivat vastuta swayam aswada sarupai varatistva so Krishna di karma kaswada heitutvam pratipadyate. So the meaning is this. Every soul in this world is covered by the gross physical body made of earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Then within that there is the subtle body, the psychological body, composed of manas, mind, buddhi, intelligence, ahankar, ego, and lastly chitta. So, the chitta is the foundation of the psychological body and all the other levels, the ego, intelligence and mind, they are the gradual grossification or contamination or condensation of the chitta, which is predominantly sattvic. So, all the internal experiences, everything that we have, our thoughts, our ideas, our conceptions, our bodily identification, even our perceptions, they are all experienced by the soul due to the movements and the configurations of the, uh, the chitta. So the movements and configurations or samskaras of the chitta, they are all known as chitta vritti, chitta vritti, functions of chitta. So uh, whenever we perceive anything in this world, it is because the chitta has modified, taken the form of that external object, and the soul is seeing that form of the external object, which has been made by his own chitta. He's, no one is looking directly at the object. Everyone is seeing the facsimile or the models of the outer world, uh, which have been made by the movements of chitta. 
Now, so that is called Chitta Vritti or Mano Vritti. So here, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, sorry, Srila Rupa Goswami is explaining that when we engage in bhakti, he, which begins with hearing, chanting, and remembering, we, the chitta, at first, we are using our senses. And all these movements of our senses are coming, first of all, from the movement of pran. The movements of the chitta are, are done by pran. So, we cannot see anything without the movement of pran. We cannot experience anything without movement of pran. And when we engage in bhakti, now our prans, our senses, and our mind are all absorbed in the vibration of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Hare. Our mm, uh, hands are engaged in worshipping the deity or in the service of the Guru or cleaning the temple. Our ears are engaged in hearing the vibrations of Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastimes. In this way, all the um, prans are engaged in Krishna's service. Now, the three gunas, Satvarajas and Tamas, they don't perform activities of bhakti. Tamas makes you lazy, Rajas makes you lusty, and perform karma, material activities, and Sattva gun is, has no action in it at all. It is niskriya, without any action. So, if you are actively engaged in devotion, now, uh, by the mercy of Guru, the Aprakritapran, supernatural Kriya Shakti, the uh, potency of activity, is gradually coming in contact with your Pran. And here Rupa Goswami says, when Bhakti it makes its appearance, Avirbhuya Mano Brito, that means Bhakti appears as a transcendental Chitta Vritti, Avirbhuya. Avirbhuya means just as the Supreme Lord makes Avirbhav, like uh, Lord Nishingadev from the spiritual world manifests here, he does Avirbhav. Or any incarnation of God, Lord Ramachandra, appears in this world. So just as the Supreme Lord uh, in his avatar does Avirbhav, appears in this world. So Avirbhuya Mano Brito, Bhakti Shakti, or Bhav descends and makes its appearance in the chitta vrittis, in the movements of pran, in your chitta, and becomes brajanti tatsarupatam, becomes one with them. Swayam prakas rupa pi basamana prakasyavat. Now, this bhav which is appearing, is very wonderful. It is the essence of sandvit shakti, sandvit vritti, and hladini vritti. Krishna's internal potency has three aspects. Sandini vritti, that is the potency of existence or spiritual form. Sambit vritti, which is a awareness. And Hadini vritti, which gives taste or bliss. So, when Bhav appears, then it is a self-manifest. In other words, even though a person in this world, when they close their eyes, they imagine something. And it is their own chitta moving, and their chitta is luminous, and they see the luminous object in their mind that they are meditating on. And the soul is also luminous and is looking at that object. So the objects in the mind, they are bhashamana. That means they are mm, uh, shining before the consciousness of the soul. So Vasamana prakasyavat, and then the soul also is luminous and illuminates them. So similarly, when bhakti comes into your mind, it appears to be just like that, but actually it is not. Why? Because, uh, see, Krishna is manifesting himself, his internal potency is manifesting the experience of bhakti and the form of Krishna and the qualities of Krishna. Now, Rupa Goswami is saying, Krishna di karma kaswada hetu tuam pratipadite. That the appearance of bhakti in the consciousness is uh, the cause of tasting Krishna's uh, form, quality, and pastimes. And it is also the uh, 
um, cause of relishing them as well. What does that mean? When Bhav Bhakti appears, it is the Karan and Karya. That means the cause and the effect of bliss. How, how is it the cause? Uh, how does it make the cause and the effect? Because it is the Sambit Shakti, the um, knowledge or consciousness, awareness aspect of the, of the Swarup Shakti, the internal potency, which reveals Krishna's form and qualities. And then, upon seeing those form and qualities by the influence of Sambit Shakti, then an effect comes, and that is the relishment. Oh, how sweet, how charming, how very relishable is Krishna's form and qualities. So that ability to taste comes from the Ladini Briti. So, but what are you tasting? You're tasting the form, and the form is revealed by Sambit. So here Rupa Goswami is saying, hey, tutuam, uh, that when Bhav appears, it becomes the cause and the effect, that means it is the cause of uh, seeing Krishna mm -hmm. and it is also bringing about the effect of relishing Krishna as well, the bliss. Mm -hmm. So this is what Sri Krishna is speaking about in these two verses of Bhagavad Gita. Dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantiyate. I give them the intelligence by which they come to me uh, out of mercy, situated in the core of their hearts, I illuminate the darkness of ignorance with the lamp of knowledge, Gyanadeep. So, uh, this is the metaphysical uh, explanation, the ontological explanation of how Krishna, by his mercy, uh, uh, reveals himself in the heart and then causes the devotee to relish his beauty and sweetness. Now, our Gurudev, Parampujapad, Nitilila, Prastong Vishnu, Parashto, Dharasatsi, Shima, Drupanuga, Charivarya, Srila Bhaktivedanta, Narayan Goswami Maharaj, in regard to this verse, has given the example of a great king named Malaya Dwaj Maharaj, and his history is given in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, chapter 28, verse. Um, uh, 28 onwards. So in, in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, you're probably aware, there's a history of a king named Puranjan. And King Puranjan was very attached to his wife Puranjani. So uh, Narad Muni is uh, describing this history to remove the ignorance of the king Prachina Vahishat. So King Puranjan was very much attached. King Puranjan was very much attached to his wife, and so because um, whatever you yam yam vapis param bhavam chatyatyanti kaliram tam tamay vaiti konti astra tad bhava bhavitaha. Whatever you remember at the last moment of your life, then you become like that in your next life. So because King Puranjan remembered his wife, then in his next life. He became, uh, Puranjan became Puranjani, he became feminine, and he took birth as a woman. And uh, he was a princess, the daughter of the king of Vidarbha. So his uh, name, now her name, was Vaidarbhi, the daughter of the king of Vidarbha. And uh, when she was at appropriate age, she was married to a great king. This was her great fortune, and his name was Malayadwaj Maharaj. So Malayadwaj, he was actually a great devotee of Sri Krishna. And towards the, the end of his, when he'd come to the, uh, the middle of his life and he was ready to retire and give up his reign, he uh, gave the responsibility of ruling the kingdom to his son. And then he went to the forest. And now King Puranjan, who has become... Uh, Vaidarbi, being a very chaste and devoted wife, she followed him into the forest. So, um, Narad Muni is giving a beautiful description of how 
Maledwaj Maharaj did very intense sadhana, very intense sadhana. He was seeing all things equally. He had completely overcome being affected by the dualities of heat and cold, wind and rain, hunger and thirst, favorable and unfavorable conditions. So he was not affected by any worldly dualities. He, was, he had no um, attachment at all to any worldly happiness or distress. He performed, performed very hard austerities and by that burnt uh, many impurities. He practiced uh, yam and niyams, all the rules and regulations of yoga. He conquered his senses. He did the pranayam, controlled his life here. Pratyahara withdrew his senses and he fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. So then he remained fixed meditating on Krishna for 100 years. And that's not 100 years of the human beings in Kali Yuga. That was 100 years of the Devatas in the heavenly planets. So really for thousands of years he remained fixed in one place deeply meditating with great devotion on Sri Krishna. And gradually the Rati, hmm, that, that is Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. Here Priti means Rati, the Stai Bhav. His uh, eternal foundational emotion began to appear. So then Nardbuni says, Savya Pakya Tayatmanam Vyati Rikta Tayatmani Vidvan Swapna Iva Marsha Sakshinam Viramam Maha. King Malia Dwaj momentarily realized Sri Krishna everywhere, seeing him everywhere in all things. And internally, he saw the form of Krishna also in his heart. And then he fainted. Vidwan Swapa Iva Marsha Sakshinam Vivaram Maha Viraram Aha. The meaning is, it was exactly like seeing in a dream. And in the dream, the Shakshi, the witness, is the uh, internal reflection. Now, what does this mean? Very, very mysterious. Gurudev mentioned this verse relating to Malaya Dwaj of, in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Because here, very precisely, step by step, what Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita is explained. Tadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayanti te. I give them the uh, intelligence, the consciousness, the experience, the realization by which they come to me. This is being exactly illustrated in this history. And it's quite astonishing, quite amazing. The meaning is this. Sakshad Bhagavaduk Tena Guna Harina Nipa Vishuddha Gyana Deepena Spurata Vishvatomakam Maledwaj had a direct vision of Krishna. That Krishna takes away all suffering and he's shining brightly. And here it is said, Vishuddha Gyana Deepena by the lamp of pure knowledge that was taught by the Guru concerning the Lord's sweetness. Malia Dwaj Maharaj saw himself that he himself was full of love for Krishna and he saw Krishna was full of love for him. And after losing that vision, because he fainted, he gave up all connection with his gross and subtle body. In other words, the common person would say, he died. So, here we see in Srimad Bhagavatam exactly what 
uh, Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita. Jnana deep, this word is used, the lamp of knowledge which destroys all ignorance. And the, the Dhani Buddha Yogantam, the, the consciousness is given whereby the devotee sees the Supreme Lord. And then I give him that consciousness by which he comes to me. And the devotee, he gives up his life. And he comes to see Krishna. He goes to the pastimes of Sri Krishna. In Raganuga Bhakti especially, in whichever universe Krishna's pastimes are just appearing. So uh, Krishna's associates are being uh, born, having the pastime of being born along with Sri Krishna in that particular universe. So the jiva, the soul, I give him the intelligence by which he comes to me. That means that this, that soul, he leaves his body and he goes to directly to that universe and is born among Krishna's associates and in this way is incorporated by Yoga Maya into Sri Krishna's eternal pastimes. Now, um, exactly how that happens step by step is being described here. Why does it say that uh, Maliyadwaj Maharaj, first he saw the Lord in everything external and then he saw the Lord in his heart and then he fainted and then actually he gave up his life, became detached from, completely disconnected from the gross and subtle body and attained the Vastu Siddhi in Krishna's eternal pastimes. And why is this vision of Sri Krishna in the heart compared to being like a dream? So these are the questions which are raised by this example of Malaya Dwaj. So let's go into this in more detail. So when Malaya Dwaj attained Rati, that is that the form of the Lord was beginning to appear in his heart. Then the because of that impression in his chitta, then when he opened his eyes and he was looking, the, that impression was so powerful that he was seeing it. He was seeing it everywhere. So that was, that's the first stage uh, described here. Even though a person from the stage of Nishta begins to realize something of Krishna's form and qualities, when Ratika, it's very powerful. And so that uh, powerful experience of seeing See Krishna in the heart, in the stage of Rati, was such that when Maledwaj was looking around, then he would just, wherever he looked, only he saw Krishna. So then, Vyapakataya, he saw Krishna everywhere. But then, Vyatirekataya, he saw Krishna in his heart. That means that the devotee close his eyes, and now, by the influence of Bhav, because the Ruchi Bish Srinya Kridaso Bhav Uchate, when Bhav appears, then the heart melts and becomes one with the Vrittis of Swarup Shakti. So now the devotee is looking in his heart and seeing the beauty of Sri Krishna. However, It is said here that there was an intense fire of eagerness appeared in the heart of Maledwaj. That means that from Bhav, now the stage of Prem was coming. And because of the stage, this Prem was coming. Therefore, only having a vision of Krishna in the heart was not enough. It was not satisfying enough. Malaya Dwaj was feeling intense separation from Krishna, even though he was seeing Krishna in his heart. The example is given also in the Damadarastakam of uh, Satchivat Rishi. You can see there that um, Satchivat Rishi is praying. Idam te mukam bojam vritam Rakta 
Alam Lakshala Bhai. O Damadar, that means O Krishna, who is bound by the rope of love. I pray to you that I can always see in the core of my heart your beautiful lotus face encircled by curling locks of uh, your dark hair with your red lips like cherries, like bimba fruits. And I want to see that face. How? Krishna is very beautiful, but he's more beautiful when he's with his devotees. And he's most beautiful when Radhika's there. So, Muhus Tumbitam Bimba Rakta Dharamme. I want to see that face which is kissed again and again. Abhyaktanila Vritam Kondalai Sdikta Raktai Stigopya. Kissed again and again by, generally people say Madhya Shoda, but here it says Gopya. So, those who are Rasik, very Rasik, they'll take Gop Gopi means Radharani. Oh, Krishna, I want to see your beautiful lotus face. Kissed again and again by Radharani. Alam Lakshalabai. What is the use of any other benediction? Even lakhs and lakhs, hundreds of thousands of benedictions are of no use to me. I only want to see this. So, uh, Sachrad Rishi is praying for this. But then, he did bhajan for many hundreds of years. And after some time, he was not satisfied with only seeing the Supreme Lord in his heart. Because when praying is coming, then one wants to see Krishna with the eyes. So then, Satchvat Rishi prays, Dat namo deva damo dharananta vishno prasida prabhoduka jalabdi magnam kripa drishti vrishyati dinam batanu grihane shamamadhyam edyakshadrisha The meaning is, now Sajivad Rishi is doing Harinam Sankirtan, chanting the holy names. Namo Deva, O Deva, O Damada, O Ananta, O Vishnu, please be merciful to me. I am sinking in an ocean of misery. Here this misery is separation. Because even though he got to the stage where he was beholding the beauty of Sri Krishna in his heart, he still was not satisfied. Why? Because when brain comes, internal vision is not enough. One wants a natural vision. And so in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Vidwan Swapna Iva Marsha. That for Maladwaj Maharaj, even though he was seeing Krishna in his heart, it was like a dream. For example, if you are hungry, you are starving. And you fall asleep, and in your dream, you see some food. But only taking food in a dream will not make your hunger go away. And at once, you wake up and you are still hungry. So in the same way, uh, he's saying that now because praying is coming, that King Maladwaj, he could not be satisfied by seeing Krishna in his heart, very clearly even. Because it was like a dream. It was as if uh, he, was, he was relishing Krishna. But praying makes one relish Krishna so much. And that one's heart it cannot live even for out a second without serving Krishna. Uh, and the thirst, that is a prema mai trishna. Intense thirst is such that even the internal vision is not enough and it cannot pacify uh, the separation that one is feeling. So, that's why it is said that here, that Maladwaj Maharaj, he fainted. So, fainting means that seeing Krishna in the heart, feeling the intense thirst of separation, even while seeing him, Prem was appearing, and when the Prem manifests, then he could not tolerate the separation anymore, and he fainted, and he gave up his body, gave up this world, and in the state of praying, Edyakshi Drisha, he directly saw Krishna with his eyes. So it's very interesting here, 
Naradrishi saying, Parabrahmani Tatmanam, Parabrahmani Tatmani. That when Malia Dwaj first he saw Krishna everywhere, was everywhere, then he closed his eyes and saw Krishna in the heart, and he saw that he was full of love for Krishna, and he saw that Krishna was full of love for him. That means he saw his own Siddha Deha. He saw his own spiritual form because the spiritual form is made of love for Krishna. And he saw Krishna's spiritual form and he saw Krishna was love, in love with him. So, but in that state even, the thirst was so intense, he was still feeling separation. Why? Because this Siddha Rup, which is experienced in the stage of Bhav, Saiva Sadaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi this Siddha Rup is defined Antas Chintita Bistatat Seva Upayogi Dehena one is serving by in a body which is exactly suitable, perfectly suitable to render the desired most cherished services like our Acharyas they're all the Dasis of Radhika, so those who follow them they attain a Surup of a manjri, of a maidservant of Radhika, or very young, very attractive, extremely beautiful, dressed in garments and ornaments, which are the prasadi, Radharani herself, they were her garments and ornaments, and she has given them as a gift, uh, feeling very um, satisfied and overjoyed with that maidservant's service. She has given them, and so she's decorated in. Radharani's prasadi clothing and ornaments. So when see Krishna sees your clothing and ornaments, then he remembers, oh, these are Radhika's clothing and ornaments, and all the pastimes that Krishna had with Shimati Radhika when she was also wearing those clothing and ornaments. So here, Parabrahmani Chatma Chatmanam, Param Brahmani Tatatmani. That Malaya Dwaj, he's seeing, oh, I am full of love for Krishna. So the devotee sees his own spiritual form, the Siddha Rup, and how she is loving Krishna. And the devotee sees Krishna is also in love. Krishna himself, he is praying. Yatkin karishu bahusha kaluka kavani nityam parasya purushasya shikanda mole tasya kadara sanidere subhano jayas tatkeli kunja bhavananga namaja nisyam Krishna himself being very eager to meet with Radharani knows I cannot meet with her unless her maidservants agree to open the gate of the, to the courtyard of the Nikunj and let me in. So, Sri Krishna himself is uh, offering pranams and sweet words and prayers uh, with very choked up in emotion, praying to them, please allow me to meet Radhika. I have, may have made some offense, but I will never commit such offense again. So Krishna is full of love for the devotee, devotee is full of love for Krishna. And when the devotee sees the love for Krishna, of Krishna for himself, then this thirst, intense thirst comes. Uh, but this thirst cannot be satisfied only in this antas chinti da bista tat seva upayogi dehena, this body. Why? Because this body is the manifest as a in the chitta vritti. It is manifest when the Swarup Shakti has taken control of the subtle body of that sadhak. So, therefore, the sadhak, he faints, and that means he gives up his life and now enters into Sri Krishna's Leela. And now, the, the, just as a person, you see, a person in a dream is experiencing a world, but this world he's experiencing, and the body in which he's experiencing that world in a dream is all a chitta vritti. So even though the chitta vrittis in the dream are caused by the mode of passion, uh, so they are not like the chitta vrittis which are of the, uh, the sadhak who is realizing he is a, uh, the siddha rup, he is a spiritual form. But still, it's a chitta vritti. It, it is a manifestation of his uh, chitta under the control of Swarup Shakti. And so therefore, it has been considered to be like a dream because the Atma is not experiencing everything uh, directly. So, 
when the brain comes, then the devotee gives up the gross physical body and also the chitta. If we can say the chitta, seeing Krishna and his pastimes in the clean chitta, is like seeing in a reflection in a mirror, then we can say this is like <laughs> breaking the mirror and behind the mirror is actually Krishna is actually there directly. So, the dami buddhi yogam tam yena mamupuyanti te. See, Krishna is saying, I give him the vision of myself. And as he loves me, I also love him. When he sees my love for him, the devotee becomes overwhelmed with intense separation. And uh, I bless him with more and more Shuddha Sattva. I give him the light. And then his chitta is finished and he gives up his body. The Dami Buddhi Yogantam Yena Mama And he comes to me and enters into my pastimes. So this is a very incredible verse, the essence of Bhagavad Gita. The exact details of that essence have been given in the history of King Malaya Dwaj in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is the essence of our life. So remember Krishna said, to whom does this happen? Tesham Satatayuktanam, only to those who Natchita Madgata Prana Bodhyanta Parasparam Katyanta Shamam Nityam Tushanticha Ramanticha. Those who have given their chitta, they've given their minds to me, they give their senses to me, they're in the association of their guru and pure Vaishnavas, always hearing Harikata, always having kirtan together and relishing that, or then all these things will happen the realization of Krishna everywhere, the realization of Krishna's seva in the heart, and then as Prem is appearing, the dissatisfaction of that internal realization, and then one will feel the fire of separation and give up his uh, gross physical body and subtle body and enter into the pastimes of Krishna. Uh, this is what our life is for. Our life is not for anything else. Don't lose any time in any other activities. We pray at the lotus feet of Guru and Goranga that gradually, gradually we can realize this, the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Puli Vrindavan Bihari Lala Ki Jai Varasani Wali Ki Jai 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 Sri Radhe Sham Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo All glories to Gurudev, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. And now uh, we've completed our broadcast for this week. We're going to have um, a Zoom conference with, all, with the English-speaking devotees. So we'll see you in five minutes there. And don't forget, tomorrow at the same time, we have uh, the uh, next part of our Guru Tattva Samana, which will be with Spanish translation for Spanish-speaking devotees. And then after that, there will be Ishta Ghosti questions and answers with the Russian-speaking world. Tomorrow is also the uh, disappearance day of uh, Sila Bhaktino Thakur and Sila Gadara Pandit also. So we'll be celebrating uh, those in our Ishta Goshti, which takes place Facebook. Uh, uh, which will takes place after the Guru Tattva Seminar tomorrow. And, uh, but that Ishta Goshti uh, will be on Facebook. It will not be by Zoom. So we'll be, everyone, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Also, Guru Tattva Seminar first, and then the glories of Srila Gadara Pandit and Srila Bhaktinav Thakur on Facebook. Hare Krishna.